Hi. In the previous video I showed how to make a three-phase bridge rectifier to convert these hoverboard motors into a DC generator. This video I want to cover how to take these motors apart, remove the tire, and how to mark and drill them to adapt some kind of drive mechanism to them depending on if you want to use it for um, wind power or hydroelectric or just adapt it to um, some other drive mechanism for generating power. This is a little bit cheaper motor that I got for five dollars at a yard sale. I haven't taken this one apart yet. Allen wrenches. The first thing we need to do is remove it from the frame. There's different grades of these motors, it seems like the metal ones that are all metal that have an aluminum frame, and the motor housing itself is metal. Both of these I got at yard sales for five dollars. I think if I had my preference I'd rather find the metal motors. They seem more robust. But Kind of hard to complain when it's five dollars and you got a nice motor that you can make something out of for not a lot of money if you're like me and like tinkering with stuff and like the idea of being able to generate your own power off grid for camping or just an interest it's a hobby shaft is stationary it doesn't spin the motor shaft is held in place with the frame so the motor housing is what spins they're not super easy to take apart Mostly because of how tight the tire fits. Of course, you don't have to take the tire off. If you want to just leave it on there, or maybe the tire would be a good ad adaptation to whatever you're wanting to drive it with. strange noise in the background is a 3D printer running. Inside here, there's the coils and the magnets around it on the outside. The coils are really difficult to get out of there. They're very hard to get loose from the magnets. You gotta put a lot of force on it. Very strong magnets. Those are. Uh, Neodymium, I think is how it's said. I call it nidium. I'm not actually sure how that's pronounced. Inside there, there's a bearing. Good ball bearing. So they're built 
pretty good. There's a ball bearing back there. And there's a ball bearing on this side. These are meant to hold up really well. Despite this motor being a cheaper motor. It's built the same as the metal ones except for the plastic. For our purposes I think it'll hold up just fine as a wind turbine. Some soapy water might not hurt trying to get this tire off. That's optional. So this device here you can pick up at a probably a lawnmower shop. It's for balancing the blades on lawnmowers. So you can put the blade on there. It's got a stair step pattern to fit a lot of different blades. Put your lawnmower blade on there and it shows if it's balanced while you're sharpening it. You can take a little more material off of one side if it's out of balance to make it balanced so it doesn't vibrate. I found a socket that fits on there pretty good without wobbling and that socket I wrapped some tape around it. it fits inside that bearing just right. Now we have a balancing mechanism that we can spin. Find a marker. I want to mark an area where it's not going to interfere with the coils and not too close to the bearing so I have room for machine screws in there so the area I'm going to choose is right about there which looks like it's in line with about this area right here so I'm going to pop that on there give it a spin and I'm going to try to hit that mark with my marker without some good machining tools and a means to um, check this up in a lathe and do it more precisely this is about the best way I found to do it cheap and want to spend a lot of money on uh, making a wind turbine out of this so it has four marks on the front housing. That's a thicker part of the plastic, so I'm going to shoot for that area. Put a straight edge on there. So now I've marked a circle by spinning it right on the line where I wanted to put some machine screws and then I've marked the center and the center of those lines where I want to drill at. So let me find my drill and a drill bit real quick. There we go. What I want to do is mark these areas where I want to drill. With a punch. Now 
we have our four marks right where I want the bolts at. smaller drill bit so now those holes have come out right in the area that I wanted them at flush enough where it's not going to damage the coils when I put it back together you don't want the screws sticking up inside there enough to hit these coils on the front and damage them put four machine screws in there with nuts on them and now we have a way to adapt this motor to something else to generate power. Find four machine screws real quick. Alright. You probably want to use stainless especially if this is going to be outdoors generating power as a wind turbine. four bolt holes that are uh, fairly accurate as far as the placement of them so we don't wind up with a lot of oscillation or wobble or being off balance. It's a way to mark this. You don't have to do it this way. You can just measure and place your holes. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's a five dollar motor so can be whatever you want it to be. It's kind of difficult to work in here with tools because of the magnets. I wouldn't get your finger in between those magnets and uh, the coils putting it back together. You want to be aware of just how strong these magnets are to a large piece of metal like that. We're going to put it back together here in a minute, and uh, you'll see when I go to snap it back together, it's uh, it's got quite a bit of force. So you want to watch your fingers and make sure you don't have your fingers in the way. Because they could cause some, cause some damage. Make sure I've got these good and tight. Screwdriver keeps sticking to the magnets, and I can't <clears throat> get lined up on the screw. Every time I get the screwdriver close, it wants to stick. <laughs> well, there we go. Four machine screws, nuts on the front. So now we have a way to adapt this motor to um, a mechanism like this. This one wound up having six screws. This one only has four just because of the placement of where the thicker parts of the metal were. So these metal ones, they have uh, six spokes where this plastic one only had four, the thicker part of the plastic. I chose the thicker part of the plastic because this is actually transparent. You can see through those clear windows. I imagine this had lights inside of it. Yeah, it has LEDs on the front. So it's designed to illuminate from the inside out. We're not going to use any of that. Okay, here's the dangerous part. When we go to put this back in, you want your fingers out of the way. Because it's going to start pulling about right there. And when it goes back in there, it's going to do it with some force. Make sure it's seated in the bearing all the way. 
give it a wiggle and a spin. I think it's in there all the way. Pop that back together. Get the screw holes lined back up. And then put the screws back in. You could adapt this with a couple of pipe clamps to something else. I find the hoverboard um, bodies are a good mount as long as they're not broken. We've adapted this hoverboard motor with some machine screws that we can adapt to uh, wind turbine blades that we can make out of PVC pipe. Um, I need to make another video on how to do that. Um, there's others out there. So that's how I adapted my hoverboard motors. Into a wind turbine. And I have one right here that I've already completed. The blades are made out of PVC pipe. I just cut a crude blade shape, cut a PVC pipe into fours, split it down the middle, and then split it again. And then I uh, drilled holes in all the blades and bolted them all together so they were all in one stack. And then I cut the blade shape with all of them in the stack at the same time. So all the blades are the same shape. This one has my three-phase bridge rectifier on it that we built in the last video. DC power plug. It's not very windy today, but I do have a previous video that I can put in here and show you how well it works. It was running a 12-volt, uh, 4-watt LED bulb with uh, just a moderate amount of wind. Kind of a windy day. Got a tail rudder on it. I designed it to hang. I wanted this to be portable. So I can tie a rope around that, throw it up in a tall tree limb and hoist this up and start generating power without a lot of setup. So there we go. A hoverboard converted into a wind turbine. Thanks for watching.